Good evening, we are Team 7. My name is Hector. My name is Juan Herrera. And I'm Bruno Pinillo. Uh, we're going to talk about clean room robot automation. Okay, first we're going to start off talking about the actual clean rooms themselves and the standards that they contain. A 56 page document which clarifies exactly what a clean room consists of and how much particles should be in a, in a cubic millimeter in the air. And that's how the, the, each room is classified as what standard it is. We have five different types of clean rooms. We have the clean zone, the clean room, the as-built clean room, the at-risk clean room, which um, contains machinery, and the operation clean room, which contains machinery and with personnel. We're going to be dealing with the at-risk at clean room for our, our unit. Uh, the Japanese also have a, a clean room standards in, in their country. Uh, this is what a clean room pertain, uh, consists of. We have a turbulent flow and laminar flow, which helps um, move the particles out the air through here, and this is how people dress up in clean rooms. Um, and that, like I mentioned before, an at-risk clean room uh, contains the operating, uh, uh, operating personnel in the facility, and now we're going to have Hector talk about why robotics. Um, robotics gives us the flexibility and quality in the room. The flexibility allows us to move the robots in a certain way, and quality helps us to produce high quality results with no error. Uh, workers are one of the main uh, constraints that produce about 40% of the emissions in the clean room. So that's why we have robotics now that uh, we can have process to reduce those emissions. Uh, there is a machine, the hydraulic machine can work up to ISO 7 uh, containing clean rooms and the, uh, most of the electric uh, devices work up to ISO uh, 5 the, when it's the water cool. The trend for robotics, uh, all the market now are becoming very uh, industrial using robots. Um, also, the pharmaceutical life and the life sciences need clean room robots, and also the food packaging and um, medical market. Uh, the robot series are applications for human environment, uh, the BHP, and the suitable for pharmaceutical and life science market. The leading manufacturers are the KUKA robot, is one of the largest production of robots in the world, and it's the number one PC control robot. Now I'm going to talk about early practices that Bruno is going to talk about. Okay. Here we can see a picture of uh, an early practice. This is an electric dock. This is a pretty simple and old school robot, as you can see in the picture. Here now we have that. Electro and Sparkle, which are uh, two robots made by uh, Westinghouse in 1937 and 1938. These were displayed on the World Fair on New York. The fair ran from uh, April 30, 1939 until October 27, 1940. Uh, this uh, robot was seven foot tall and it had a, a big vocabulary of over 700, 700 words. Here we have a picture of Electro and Sparky, the, the robot dog. Uh, you can see how tall it is, and next to a, a regular human. Uh, and Unimation is a company created by George Devil. Created, uh, he created Unimate, which is a robot from the 1950s. His uh, original patents are the first robot uh, manufacturing company and the first programmable industrial robot. Uh, Uni Uni Unimation Incorporation was the first industrial robot from Connecticut. Um, it was for the, for the first purchased by GM and used die casting and welding parts and saved for labor and because it required intense heat and it, many people got limbs cut and was uh, also produced harmful gases. Here we have some pictures and examples of old school uh, robotics. Here we have an arm carrying a heavy piece of steel and modern arms of different sizes which are more flexible and capable of other stuff. Here from progression of robots, I'm going to give you with one. Um, for the use of uh, clean room robots, uh, the robots needed to be upgraded, needed to be changed. So one of the things that were done is that, uh, that anodized aluminum coverings and protective outer coating uh, and specialty sealed joints, sealed joints, which allow a line of robots to be safely cleaned with hydrogen peroxide and it makes these a class 100 robot, which is part of the standards and it's a clean room robot. Uh, one of these type of robots is a dental BPG-26 axis articulated aseptic robot. 
which um, can, which is traditionally used in the clean room and has been limited to medical and pharmaceutical molding. Due to increasing demand on the manufacturing process and environments, cleaner production areas are becoming more important for all applications. So a need for clean room molds and many other applications is needed. Uh, so some of the upcoming advances as well are the hybrid machine replacing hydraulic line robots. Two new injection passes from the builder, uh, Nestle, which is an Elian 2200 and 2800 hybrid, phasing out its synergy line and hydraulic units. These new hybrid units are electrically driven, and they also uh, use um, electrical metering drives. Nestle says that these, these um, robots will be able to work with half the energy of their hydraulic robots. Here is a, a picture of the uh, Denzel robot, the aseptic unit, which could be sterilized with hydrogen peroxide. Uh, this is another current robot that's being used that in the clean room. It's a palletizing robot, which you can palletize food, medicine, anything you need. It's clean, accurate, and it also has safe, no damage, no damage to the, uh, any of the things. Here, Hector, about conceptual design. Uh, conceptual design is where we can see these are the four types of robots that we can have in the market. So it's 3R, PPR, PPR, and 3R. Uh, now we're going to see a video of uh, the conceptual design, so where we can see uh, our robot, what it's gonna do. It's gonna pick up the glass, a plasma, and then pick, put it in the frame in the other side of the room. So we're gonna design something similar, but in a simple version. As you can see now the robot is picking up very precisely the glass, picking it up and puts it in the other side of the room. Uh, to do that, we came to uh, the calculation part. So as you can see, we chose the length of the link. We chose the position where the link is going to get. And then we found all the angles of link one and link two. After that, doing the calculation, uh, we found the project of the path of the end effector that is projected here, as you can see. And this is our angle for each link. After uh, doing the calculation, or we came up to the conclusion that the, the sum of the length cannot be exceed 230. Uh, and it, the difference of the length has not, it cannot be less than 60 centimeters because the end effector will not reach the position that we want to achieve. Uh, now it's going to talk one about the actual applications of the LCD plug. All right, so our robots can be lifting up LCD glasses from one location to another. Right, and in order to transport these large pieces of glass very carefully, clean room robots are needed. One reason is also that there could be no dust and no static electricity when dealing with electrical units and also when dealing with visual devices like this because you don't want any, any dust or static in the screen when it's put onto the frame. So these robots need to be in a clean room. And as you can see here, the 600 by 80 millimeter up to 1,000 by 1,500 millimeter large glasses that are being used. Uh, here's we have Bruno with um, benefits from robotics. Here are some benefits of robotics. Uh, as we can see, robots are a lot faster. They're, they don't get tired, so there's no exhaustion. They're cleaner, they're more precise, and their accuracy is incredible. Uh, there's little or basically no damage to materials or stuff that is being worn by robots due to their accuracy, as mentioned. Also, here we can see a picture of the solid work design done on the computer, where this arm is lifting a piece of glass by suction through this little piece. This is supposed to represent a conveyor belt and where the glass is going to be running. Once the arm picks it, picks it up by suction, lifts it up 20, 20 centimeters, brings it back a minute and a half, and then drop it back again. Here we have a video uh, of the whole process. As you can see, the, the arm goes up 20 centimeters, goes back and one meter and a half, and then you're gonna drop it back 20 centimeters back again. This is, this is very precise and delicate work because we're working with glass. Um, that's pretty much it for our presentation, so, so thank you very much. Thank you for watching.